Uh, we'll start the meeting here. It's uh, 6 o'clock, and we're uh, located at the Addison Township office of 1440 Rochester Road, Addison Township. Uh, today is uh, June 20th, 2022. If we could all stand for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. Liberty, justice, justice, and let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the hope that you, our your love brings. Thank you for the people in our audience, both of them, and who are here tonight and want to do well for our community and also your will, God. Lord, we need your wisdom. Lord, we ask that you would bless our families. You would keep our tender care. God, we ask this in your name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Good. Here. Karen Bible, excuse. Linda Karen, present. Edward Hill. Here. Roy Fisher, here. Bennett, present. Supervisor Pearson. Here. Okay. Any announcements? No. no. Part reports, as usual, available in my office. Just contact myself or my uh, deputy supervisor, Jamie. Uh, we're going to petitions. None. Um, order of business, uh, approval of the agenda. Yes, I have um, a couple amendments to the agenda. 4A, proposed change of site plan cemetery benches location. 5, letter festival com committee for $500 as partial reimbursement for the portable bathrooms from the community projects account. Six, authorize the closure of the township with pay for up to two days or as determined by the supervisor for paving of the paid parking lot project. I'll, I'll make a motion. Second that. Go ahead. I'll, I'll make second. a motion to approve the agenda as amended. I'll second. We have a motion. No motion. Any support? Any further comments? Not hearing any? Go ahead and roll call, please. Yes. Jacob Newby. Yes. Linda Garrett. Yes. Edward Phil. Yes. Lori Fisher. Yes. Ben. Yes. Supervisor Pearson. Yes. Consent agenda. Yes. A few items on the consent agenda would be the approval of the May 16th, 2022 minutes, approval of the bills, resolution adopting slash affirming the 2022-23 health care benefits, appointments to the Oakland County Broadband Committee, Jacob Newby and Pauline Bennett as alternate. Appointment of temporary building official building inspector for Randy Warnock. Authorized six hundred and eighty-three dollars for Marine Patrol from the police fund to twenty-one court fees, MTA dues and online learning center for eight thousand seven hundred and fifty-two dollars and sixty-one cents from dues and fees. Okay. Thank you. Any questions on that? I'll make a motion we approve the consent agenda. Okay. I'll support. We have support. Okay. Any comments? No comments? Roll call, please. Lily Garrett? Yes. Ed Rico? Yes. Jacob Newby? Yes. Lori Fisher? Yes. Bennett? Yes. Supervisor Pearson? Yes. Okay, we'll move on to item number two. <coughs> I guess PEA uh, Mike uh, is out here <clears throat> and he came up with the design and tonight we're kind of opening this up for discussion for an improvement for the park uh, next to the parking lot. Um, as you know, we're going to apply for a grant for uh, this. We do have some of the money from uh, the rescue money that we're going to uh, put into this that we had authorized uh, uh, set aside. Um, but what we're looking for is just input on some of the things uh, that we'd like to put in the park there so that when we apply for the grant, uh, uh, probably through the trust fund, uh, DNR trust fund. And um, so if anybody's got anything, this is open for discussion. You can see the, uh, the print of kind of what uh, Mike from PEA came up with. Does anybody have any comments on it? I've got a comment. Yes. Uh, we got a little get together from friends, and I hear nothing but good things about this. Uh, the one thing they ask is who would be a contact person here? Would it be Pauline? 
Okay. Park. If somebody had a question about the park or something, I said call Pauline. For the grants? No, no, yes. just ideas and what what okay. is going in it and everything like yeah. that. They needed to yeah, anybody and I said uh, just call Pauline, she'll tell you. But they like the idea of that what's it called? Pickleball. Well, we did get some uh, donations, some generous donations from some of the residents for the pickleball already. They wrote some checks. Um, I gotta bring those in. But um, so I contacted Oxford, and they said their pickleball court is just full every day. So that's a good idea that Karen had with the pickleball. Um, as far as I think everybody could see that there was like a vacant area towards the east. I don't know how everybody feels about that, but I'm kind of leaning towards a volleyball court because Where are you I think at? right over in here, there's oh, room right for a nice. volleyball court. Um, I talked to Mike about that. He said that's not going to be uh, a huge expenditure. Uh, that way, then families can actually play volleyball, or if it's early evening, I can see teenagers possibly coming out because it seems like this park that we're trying to design here is through all ages, but yet I think we're missing it with the teenagers, so I kind of would like to see the volleyball court in there. Um, I have more ideas, but I want to see other people's suggestions. I've got another question. Is, is this thing going to be closed at night or dusky dark, or is it going to be lit up? No, it, it will be closed at dark. We, um, we don't want to have it open at night. Okay. Seasonal as well. I have um, one suggestion is that we had Forty John somewhere. Uh, I think we can do that. I think that if we did put them out, I think it would be wise that if we put some kind of a barrier around them so they don't just stand out there. And uh, if, if that's what somebody was interested in, um, I'd have to get a hold of the company. And I'd like a little better ones than what um, <clears throat> we typically get. Maybe we can get the ones that are just a tad bit bigger. I was going to suggest whole real ones, but. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, 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 yeah. So I think we need a consensus on some of these ideas because it's going to have to go with the drawing board. And would Porter John actually be on a site plan, or is it something that we're going to check into on our own? It's not really going to be applicable to a grant. Well, I think the pathway to it would be. We had a pathway versus just sitting in the grass, and I think it needs to be a space allocated. Um, the other concern I had was about these trees on the east side. I think um, we have shade on the east side already. I think the trees really should be on the west side if we are going to put trees in there, just because that's where you need the shade in the afternoon. I think the way the sun comes through there, that that's kind of which maybe we should eliminate the trees, or I, I, it just seems silly to put them on that side. Which, are you, are you not talking the ones that are that border Rochester, are you talking about the trees that are on where the place the east that side, is? On the east side of the place gate, it seems like if we could maybe shift it around a little bit. Um, we did put some trees, maybe the shade seating, um, or a seating area might be, so. That would be my suggestion. I, I just don't see any reason to put all these trees over on the east side. It's just going to make that area kind of just all shade. I mean, for the volleyball people, I know they they actually like to be in the sun. And I yeah, I I agree. As far as the trees, that's just more maintenance uh, in the leaves and the. Too many trees. I'd like to see the trees that are in the entrance. They're flowering trees. I think it would correspond with our area um, that we have in our entrance for the building. Um, what trees we want to remove would be a good question um, because there's a bunch of trees that are by Rochester Road as well. I think there's too many there. Too many, and there's too many even where Linda is talking about. There's, there's just too many trees because we want this to be an active park, but yeah, I can see where we're gonna have to have some shade. I think shade around the seating areas, and I'd like to see seating areas where the bocce ball and the pickleball courts are, um, and then like shade trees around, say the center of the playground somehow, maybe an evergreen, something to block that west sun. 
Yeah. Um, my thoughts on it, I was a little confused. Do you enter where the circular? Yes. Okay. Um, so that's close, closer to the kids' area where they could possibly escape in a very far walk to the bocce ball courts. But I understand from the way everything's situated that it, it kind of falls out like that. But the farther north that we could possibly move that entrance so that it's not so far to walk to the courts. And I think a volleyball court is a great idea also. So I was kind of wondering though if we could rotate clockwise that playground set, put the two to five year old playground set to, towards the back so that there's no chance they could run out to the parking lot and then put the volleyball court in, in the open space that that could create. And I think that's a good idea too. I think if we could put the playground a little <coughs> further east and then work with that open area. Well, there will be a fence all the way up, a new fence all the way around, so that nobody should be going out into the parking lot. Well, it just it does just seem to me like it's a really far walk, um, and maybe we could move the entrance more to the north. But the walk is, you know, okay to do because that's why we're having that walkway. The entrance, and I'm going to just share why he put the entrance here, because he's trying to tie it together with the gazebo in hopes people will actually start using the gazebo and possibly have some picnic tables out there, which we would do on our own. So he kind of wanted to bring it down a little bit because the gazebo's been sitting there with no use. So I think that's why he did that. Well, and I think if we make these types of improvements to the park, though, people would use the gazebo. I'll see yeah. people out there on a, a summer day. They use that just for shade. Um, and then if we move the play area too far to the east, if we are going to go with the small version of the splash pad, um, the piping is going to be a lot longer because I think he was trying to keep the small version of the splash pad closer to where possibly the fire department's uh, pipes are. Well, and speaking of splash pads, um, I hope that we think long and hard if we go down that road, just the problems with maintenance and upkeep and looking at the price, $100,000 for a splash pad with 55 degree well water, um, I don't think that like it's not the typical one that we used to have that we were proposing. This one's very small and it's just for basically the little kids. But the two to five year old playground is, just so everybody sees, the two to five year old playground is way up in this section. So here's the entrance. So he has that separated and then the five to 12 is down lower. And then when you look at it, um, I believe that he has fencing, where is that? I thought he had fencing around the play area as well. So I don't, unless there's a really big reason to move it, I think he's okay there. Because once we move this way over here, I guess he can do some, try to figure out if the volleyball court will fit. Well, and just for safety, it just seems like we could rotate that whole area possibly. So but Lori, when you're saying rotate, you want it to go diagonal or actually move the entire unit somewhere? Rotate it clockwise so that the um, two to five year old playground would be towards the east side of the park. I just, if that separates and makes more room. So this would actually be bumped up? No, so you're talking about rotate. just moving it to the right, the top part of it. Well, you want it closer to the. Well, other places, right? <coughs> so that is to fit in a volleyball so court where you've got a ball being spiked. But then, if is your there. suggestion based on eliminating the water feature? I would prefer to eliminate the water feature, no matter what, I suppose. Um, but the rotation would necessitate that. No. No, I just thought that that would make more room. But I, maybe he has some ideas if the volleyball court should run north and south or east and west because that would actually probably situate it east and west where somebody's got their sun and their eyes. I, like, I think we need to take some consensus on some of these items so that we know. This pollinated garden too, I mean, that's like a lot of bees and stuff. That goes by my book. We just put it over in the, in the uh, area we wanted more of those type of plants. Well, 
No, because that would be eligible. I mean, if we wanted to do it at another time, but the SPARC grant is just for the recreation. So to move it outside of this, I don't think it'll be eligible, but if we kept it in there, we could, but. No, I mean, it's just, just like, no. it's like I think all of us, Mary probably, if she saw this, would be able to say, yeah, I have all that in my yard. We can just move some over. And then with the 55, because we're gonna cut a lot of the trees out and the landscaping out, with the 55,000 that you save with that one, I mean, these are loose estimates, would be over half of the splash pad. Well, I'd like to eliminate the uh, pollinator garden only because that's more maintenance and I'm already having trouble getting people to do maintenance on things outside, the restrooms and different things. Um, I mean, just getting somebody to do all the maintenance around the uh, actual building here has not been easy. I think the seating looks really cool that he designed. So I'm I, I the just, I'm, out front. <laughs> I'm tired of doing that. <laughs> but I know Pat knows how to. Will be less suing me. <laughs> <laughs> I did really well until I tried to get up. Uh -huh. <laughs> Is this park open to everyone? Yes. And there'll be no fees? No fees. Especially if you get a DNR grant. It's got to be open to everybody and it can't, you're not supposed to charge either. So. Could we find out who wants these small splash pad in or out? Because that's going to make a difference where the location is. Well, I think. Before we decide that, we better find out from the health department first of all. I remember, I hope they haven't changed all their rules on it, but um, if you put a splash pad in, if it's recycled water, then it's got to be tested every couple uh, times a day. And, um, and this is not that type. This is one where the water comes right out of the well and, the, and then it pipes um, down to the river, okay, so it's just the fresh water coming out, and like you said, it will be 55 degrees, but if you look at the, um, if you look at the, the one picture of the uh, splash pad just in the bottom where it just comes up from the bottom, uh, the kids do run through that, and, and they run back and forth, and at 55 degrees, that doesn't matter to them, because they're not in the water, but the, uh, and the ones I've seen do have like sometimes an alternating um, different uh, spray where it comes up and down and sometimes that's intriguing to the kids. But as far as like you say, um, over in Oxford, actually with all the spraying things that are at 55 degrees is cold. So I'm just looking at it, a simple one with the um, sprays that come up off out of the ground. That one's huge and that one's wide. I mean the kids really enjoy it. But yeah, this is yeah, small in comparison. Just just for something for the kids to cool off with. Put a sprinkler on. So what about the deciduous hedge? That's another pollen, I would say, attraction. Are we gonna get rid of since we already have a site plan that they're supposed to have trees there. Which one are you talking about? Um, so this is the shape of the fire department. So he's <coughs> proposing to put hedges there and it looks like they're flowering hedges. And it is close to where either going to play bungee ball or depending upon volleyball or where the little kids are going to be. So it's in this L shape type thing. Would we eliminate that as well? Isn't there a dumpster there? I don't yeah. think that's the case. I think it, it's pretty close, so I think that's hiding a pretty unattractive area. So I think it's important to have something there that you can't see through. Um, I think that's the uh, cell tower. Because if you see where the budget ball courts are, and we oh, yeah, it is. that's the cell tower. And he's putting those hedges in front of what the cell tower is supposed to be 
uh, having the greenery. So I would like to see the cell tower people put up the trees that they're supposed to and possibly get rid of this hedge because that's going to be another area of the trees. Well, I think that we should contact them because it looks terrible right now that the trees have all died or all, kind of all brown and everything. I'm sure they would maybe update that. I think that's I'd like to see the trees, the trees anyway, on the west side of the playground. They can squeeze them in there. So if we move it, they could probably put some of those on the west side. So I just think of uh, redesigning the landscape. I mean, minimize them. We don't really need to hold the deciduous hedge. Maybe a couple bushes to screen the dumpster or something like that. Or maybe even at a future point talk about an enclosure. But I think he's looking for um, like some really, how would you say, friendly like the water. Well, I think we need some landscaping. I mean, I wouldn't want it to be completely sterile. So minimizing the landscaping. I'd like shade um, in the seating areas. I'd like to see seating around the um, football and the bocce courts. And um, we need the horseshoe. So there's no there's no fence around the playground. It's just like a border. Yeah, I was looking at that. You're right. It's just a border. It's not a fence. I thought the or, uh, ornamental fencing also went into the play area, but it his arrow is just around the fence line. Okay. I wondered about that. Um, yeah, I, I think. Um, Minimalizing the landscaping where it makes sense um, for the sun, shade, um, if there's any specific screening. I don't think we need all these trees along Rochester Road. Um, so how about are we going to leave the two corner ones and take out two in a row? I mean, he, need, he, he really needs some lead here, otherwise we're going to go back and forth. How many feet is that? Yeah, I would say leave the two end ones and then skip one and do one, skip one, do one, skip so one, every do other? one. No, oh, yes. Okay, so every other. So he has, let's see what he has as far as those go. Um, I am, I guess we're going to ask somebody who knows the plants and trees. Do these trees make a huge mess, or are they going to be easy to clean up? Leaf-wise, like what type of tree do we want there? Because we have very limited manpower for maintenance. I would just put some of these flowering trees, like they say, right here. <clears throat> and um, those, I don't think, are very messy. Flowering is going to be down here. I think those are smaller ornamental yes. around here. So he's talking entrance. about this line. I think he left that just as some type uh, of deciduous. I would put a lot of trees up there and the little leaves and just go into the bocce ball. And the, right. So I would just. Do we want evergreen or do we want to get rid of the trees? I wouldn't put evergreen in there either. Okay. I think the evergreens, I like evergreens because they block it. A little bit, but I'm thinking they'll get too big where it takes mm -hmm. up too much space. That's what I'm saying. Even the flowering trees up there would look nice. What about those? Um, I think they're called arboretums. They stand about this tall and they're like pyramid. Arborvitaes? Those. Um, the, those are deer canes. Yeah, deer oh, deer canes. Okay, forget it. <coughs> All I see is a lot of leaves on these. I think the leaves are small and they blow away though. We, so we have one, two, three, four, five. five along we have five. Hey Bruce, can I ask if I, I can get, get my thoughts in order here? Starting at Rochester Road, every other tree, mm -hmm. starting with the middle ones, going down, Bocce Ball Court State, just like they are. <coughs> going to the right, you got the two um, pickleball courts. Mm -hmm. Uh, next to the pickleball courts is a volleyball court. Yep. Okay. Going south of that or going uh, below the pickleball courts have seating so people can relax and sit. I can only see uh, 
the three across, the two pickleball and one at the volleyball. Can't get anything in the bocce ball area. Well, what about the areas where we eliminated the trees? Can't we put like benches along there? Yeah, okay, we could do that. Where there's every other, we could put benches there so they could watch. Do we want that many benches? One, two, three, four. So we four benches. There's never enough seating in any park. So I think and we could even put a bench right there too. We don't have to put the uh, ones we're using in our cemetery. We can find just good old benches just from Home Depot. You know, just somewhere well, to sit down. We want to get down. Like that. So four benches at the top. Okay, yeah. keep going. And then going on down, uh, Lori's idea, shifting the, the kids, I'm going to call it the balloon, shifting the balloon at the top to the clockwise so the bottom would stay the same but the little curl around. Uh, Linda's idea eliminating some of the trees but put some on the other side. Now the balloon is now moving on the other side. Put a couple of trees there. Can we stop? And then going on down. Can we ask Linda how many trees? Do you want three trees on the west side or uh, two trees? Um, I think the trees should be, uh, I think three. It should be screening the seating area. So two trees on the opposite side. <clears throat> Am I reading this right, that the, there's seating area in the middle of the two? It looks like it. It looks right, right next to the, what do you call it? Right in the middle between the right. uh, two-year-olds and the olders. Okay. Looks like seating. The splash pad or seating. Yeah. Okay. So going on down, nothing changes with the older kids, but the two-year-olds again shifted. The trees are coming out on the right side. And three is going in on the left. Going on down. Uh, Bruce has got to check with the DNR on the uh, splash pad. Splash pads over here. So what's this? That's the entrance. That's the space. Okay. The entrance. This is the splash so pad right here, the right? The splash pad, let's say if we don't do the splash pad, then we're going to angle it, like Lori was saying. Yeah. If we do the splash pad, it might have to stay as is. But here we go. I thought you didn't want to run it from the well that far. Oh, that, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter? Difference. No. So move it no matter yeah, what? Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, okay, so then this is all going to be shifted. But before we do anything, Bruce has got to check with the DNR to see if it's even... Well, no. Yeah, but the, the health, design health can, department. Yes, but the, the design DNR. can stay the same. Design stays the same. Yeah, so we'll just move it. Can I over. just add a comment? Yeah. So are you are you suggesting that the volleyball court be directly next to the pickleball? So that's what I was thinking. Well. That, is that going to be really tight there, or do we have that well, much room? Once we move this, as it stood right now, Mike said we had room to put it here. If we move this peanut shade to go over here, it's not going to fit there. Well, he, might have to, he might have to angle it going this way instead of north and south. He might have to do east and west. Because if you're going to put it that close to the road, you're probably going to need to put up a bigger fence. Yeah, but if this peanut is moved, it should fit going this way. So it would be east and west? Yeah. Okay, so I thought you were saying... Yeah, I was looking at it right next to the pickle We are, but it's not going to fit if Won't we fit. switch it over, I don't think. I mean, if he can make it fit, that's fine, but I'm guessing just by eyeing it, it's going to go on. But you can have mine. I mean, it's a little clustered there uh, with the bachi and the, the, the pickle ball. Maybe mm -hmm. they could be spread out over the way. Okay. I think it's just hard to follow the conversation. I think he did that in case we wanted another pickle ball course in the future. We can make it so that we could expand it. Otherwise, if we branch this out, there's no room to expand it. So pickleball stays really popular. You might want so that. So what about pickleball? further east, the two courts further east, and leave that center space open to either adding on, adding on there. Well, I think we're going to have to add another pickleball court eventually. I do too. Yeah. So it's like we might as well. Or should we just look at putting three across there? And I don't care. But I would like to see if you can fit the volleyball in though first. And then if you can see the first pickleball. So I guess I'm not seeing where we're putting. Our, so are we putting the volleyball court right there, where that was the? Well, that's the where he said it. Apparently, that it would go. You might need to check the shift. Point. This the play the area here. It goes around the play area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. That definitely looks like they intended to put a fence. That he just didn't mark it because There's that's. There's no gate. 
I it looks so like too. that cement that it goes into it would go, it breaks right there, see it? Mm -hmm. It looks like it would be a, just not a gate, but just open. The way he's got that cement walkway, and it turns and it just stops right there. And to me, it looks like his intent was to put a small kid barrier so the kids won't run away and <coughs> the two-year-olds won't run into the pickleball area or somewhere else because of I'll ask because I'm just not seeing it. Um, if you see the, design if you follow the cement mm -hmm. going down, and then when it turns into the play area, you'll see both of those double lines turn into a one single line. But see how it says right up here, 12 foot wide playground concrete edging. So um, I thought that was a fence too, but then when I read that, I think it's just the edging to keep all of the okay. um, materials inside. Okay. So I don't think it is a fence. I have one more question. Maybe Bruce can answer. Where's the fire station septic field? Up front. Right under the splash of salt. <laughs> And then, Ed, are we going to get rid of this? Yeah, because that one right there brought in a lot. We've talked about it. It's going to be a brief bee haven. And we're going to get rid of the educational pollinator garden. Illuminate. That's what I heard. So can I ask one more question? So in, in this, and i got to find it, he has on here, wood fiber playground surface includes drainage. Do we want the wood fiber playground surface, or is wood fiber translated to mulch? Yeah, I need would... to ask him that one, but I think a lot of the newer areas are putting in like the ground um, tire or some type of a plastic. I don't know if it's going to be cost prohibitive, but it's recycled uh, rubber tires. Yeah. yeah. So are we leaning towards? asking what the price would be for that as well or do we like the mulch or i think what? the mulch is on the landscaping i think the no go down lori to that end amenities wood fiber playground surface includes drainage so that's the stuff that's going inside underneath the playground equipment right that's when I don't think that's mulch. I think that's that hard surface stuff. Wood fiber playground surface? Okay. Well, for that price, that's not mulch. If you go to... <laughs> but it could be those thick pieces of wood. Like, a lot of the schools still have them. Uh, I don't know. We'll chair. ask them. Yeah. So I'm going to ask them about that. Past, and then ask what the rubber is. Okay. Okay. We have enough to go on right now? So then come back next month? Um, yeah, I think. Was there any issues with the water pressure for the splash pad? <coughs> there was if we were going to put in a big water park, okay? But the water pressure that we have over here by the fire department is more than adequate to do what we want because that's what they fill the tankers with. Um, so we do have enough water pressure, definitely for the small one. There's a township in Lapeer County that actually put one of these in, and he says it is just so much fun to watch the little kids go out there and, and play in that. And then I've also been to one in Grand Haven. They have one, um, and it is. It's just a lot of fun to watch the kids because they really can't go swimming yet. So it's a way for the like, little kids to enjoy the water. So that's kind of why I like that. How big is it? Is there a diameter? No. That I couldn't tell you. Because when Bruce was explaining it to him, he just had a small one that just shoots up so that the kids run through it. And then you can see some of the little kids where they actually step on it and try to stop it. Like so the one standing at Hurt Plaza? Pardon? Like the one standing at Hurt Plaza? That shoots yeah, they, they, well, the ones I see, you know, they go in different patterns. I mean, obviously not as large. Around. Yeah, it's so it's say. probably the same. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. But shooting up out of the... Yeah, they're okay. just little ones. Yeah. My kids run around and try to yeah. stop it, or they try to figure out where the next one's going to shoot okay. up. It's just really cute for the When they want to use it, they're just a thing. You push a hand button, and it goes on, and then 15 minutes, and it shut off. Mm -hmm. you know, okay. So. 
Right, so it's not always constantly running. Okay. If there's no use, it just automatically turns it off. I've got a couple more questions, Bruce. It's just, when are we going to be doing this? Once we get everything done next year? Um, the grant. Yeah, go ahead. The grant opens up shortly. Go ahead. The, it hasn't even been posted on the website, and that's why I really wanted to get a jump start on this. So it's based on the SPARC grant, which was money that the federal government gave. So they're going to have um, 22, 23, and 24 is the years that they're going to give away money. So I wanted to get into the first round so that hopefully we can get this. The maximum grant for these are a million dollars, so we're under the million. Um, it does state that we need a site plan. Doesn't state with the application or after the application, so I will find that out as well. But I got to do a site plan relatively quick. So I think. I don't know about everybody. I was I was hoping to get as much as this done so that when they actually say applications are ready and available, well, we can start on it. Is this something that's got to be done within the month or no. in July? Can we wait till like August to Sooner do better. some? Well, I, I have a little update at the uh, supervisor's meeting. There's three criteria. It's a new park, refurbish a park, or add to a park. Okay. And that's basically it. And it's a minimum of $100,000 and a maximum of $1 million. So you can get in there and they have a lot of money. So the bottom line is, if we have something that is pretty much approved, then I would try to get it in as you know, soon as we can. Okay. So if we were to put a concept in that we would have to, we have to stay with just that, or can we modify it? You can modify it once it's but they're going to they're going to oh, this. kind of want you to stick to it because you're going to have a site plan. So how often do you change a site plan? Once you I know. Just, just thinking how how well done it needed to be. That's what I'm going to ask. Do we have to do a site plan immediately, or can we come back with the conceptual plan? I think our chances are better off the more information that we give and the 2022 grants. They have yet to put them up, so it kind of tells you that you're only going to have a few months to apply because 2022, we're going to be in 2023 before you know it. So that's kind of why we're pushing this along so that we can get in on the 2022. Um, it did say that if we are not approved, we can withdraw this application, find out why we were not approved, and reapply in 2023. But if we are approved in 2022, then I would imagine we can go forward with other parks. Um, the watershed park needs items too. All right, so um, one last comment on the optional play film. I, I think it needs to be like rust colored bricks. Yeah, okay. Or stone. Yeah, I agree. Oh, yeah. I agree. So what action did we need to take? Pardon? I said, is there any action we need to take? Well, what I'm looking for, I guess, is a motion um, to go forward with this, and, and I'd like to have um, PEA um, probably um, do the design on this, because when you present this, you know, it's going to be up in the trust fund, and I've been up there already. I don't like to go in with all this hullabaloo like all the other people. I like to come in with a very simple, that's how we got the Lake George. Uh, Grant, um, Rod, Blazak, and I went up and it was a very simple presentation. Everybody else had all these full-blown architects there and, and um, they spent thousands on it. Uh, we had um, about four or five, five by seven pictures and we ended up getting our grant. So I, I would like them to do it, but I'd like to have us review it and um, keep it semi-simple so that you know because you know if you put something like this thick out there nobody looks at it you, you got to be able to you know go up there and present it and like i said i've been up there and i saw how everybody does professional stuff and, and it's just too much it's overwhelming whereas if you go in and tell them exactly what you want and make it simple um, you know we went from 130 to um, not even being in the ballpark of getting a grant to actually getting the grant. So um, I'll make a motion that yeah. we move forward with the changes that we've made tonight. I believe Pauline and you both have good notes on it. I'm watching you both writing them down. 
and uh, moving forward with it using PEA as the design? And not to exceed maybe five thousand dollars to uh, have them do the design. All oh, right, not to exceed five thousand for the so year. We already approved them to do the design. And what we would be looking for is grant writing. Yes. Up to five thousand. I think Colleen should do grant writing. That's if it tough fell one. in August, I would be happy to, but right now is election, so well, yeah, I kind of have to back down. Cheap excuses. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Well, because I loved it. I love doing grant writing, but being that there, that we have an opportunity and being that there is money available and everything, I think we need to not, um, you know, we need not to uh, let this one slip so, by. So I would say it's worth the it investment. It's covered. Okay. But can I, as motion is out there, can I ask a question though? So we have a lot of changes that I think we're going to tell Mike about. And we're going to authorize them to do the grant up to 5000 But the board would like to see this come back again, or did the board just want us to send them the updated designs? Like, what's the pleasure of the board on that? Personally, I'm fine with the notes that you've written. It looks like it's cut and dry. So if the grant opens up, it's okay just to... That's why I went from okay. the top to the bottom, gotcha. breaking it down to exactly what we were thinking about. <clears throat> the only question was, was the splash fund we got to give it to the health department? And if the health department says, go for it, everything's good, I'm fine with it. And we can delete it. And so it. is my grandkids. Okay. okay. I will support your motion. Anybody have any other questions? Okay, hey, roll call please. Linda Garrett. Yes. Larry Fisher. Yes. Jacob Newby. Yes. Edward Phil. Yes. Bennett, yes. Supervisor Pearson. Yes. Okay, we we'll went to item number three, cemetery ordinance review and authorize a public hearing. Uh, Pauline, of course, is in charge of the cemetery and she's added a few things on here. Did everybody see what was added or what we're looking at? highlight the couple changes you put in. One was uh, how many cemetery plots you can buy now. So this is the second time out from the township board looking at it. After the first review, I took the changes and Lori, that was a great suggestion to just cover in case somebody had young children passing. So that's been incorporated. It was sent over to legal. He went through everything um, and this would be the final draft. Uh, he went through and approved everything as worded um, so I was bringing this back to the board for input to make sure that they're comfortable it also is showing you the um, public hearing notice for the township for the township when we're ready to do that and um, Karen had wanted to see what a resolution would look like adopting it and then as you can see this resolution it's adopting an ordinance once we have our public hearing but it only addresses the in-ground burial spaces because we have yet to finalize the column barium. So then what would happen, let's say, if this is advertised in July or August, if we pass the ordinance, the ordinance is then in place, and then once the column barium's are ready and set to sell, we come back with a new resolution establishing the prices for those. Does that make sense? in the column barriers? 98. Well, no, you'd have to put, you can put up to two in each one. So, of course, that each space for sale total that will have 98. 98 or 96. Per columnarium or? Oh. So that would be what times five? Is that or? Yeah, because we're going to be shy of under 500. Okay, any questions? Well, look for a motion. I'll guys the clerk to schedule a public hearing for the 22-1 cemetery ordinance. I'll make that motion. Okay. Okay. We have a motion and we have a second. Yes. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? 
Okay, roll call, please. Jacob Newman. Yes. Linda Garrett. Yes. Ed Redfield. Yes. Lloyd Fisher. Yes. And I guess Supervisor Pearson. Yes. Okay, that passes. Now we're on to, I believe it's the, uh, it's just the cemetery, uh, the gazebo brick papers. Uh, item number four, all possible order. They, uh, apparently they came in and said that we should change the brick pavers at the gazebo for $5,300. Um, they thought it was a good idea to try to match everything. And I don't think it's really necessary that we match the brick pavers to the gazebo, to the uh, columbariums, but um, it's up to anybody's pleasure. I think it's far enough away that, it, that you know. So it's this right here. So we ordered red all through here and they're saying that it's not good to match. My, my thoughts on it is that the gazebo probably needs to be updated in the future and, and we can do all that then. I'm satisfied with what it is. Um, I'm good. So, so as far as we're concerned, um, going on to an agenda item, do we need to make a motion uh, just leave it as it is? Um, we can do no action or I can make a motion to keep the, I'll just do it so that it's on record. Uh, I'll make a motion to keep the pay by the gazebo as is. And we have a second. Any further discussion? Not hearing any roll call, please. Jacob Newton. Yes. Linda Garrett. Yes. Ed Brickfield. Yes. Lori Fisher. Yes. Bennett. Yes. Supervisor Pearson. Yes. That passes. Move we'll on to item number five. We have uh, 40. Where are we at? We have 40. Sorry. Which one is that? I don't know. This is the one that everybody received quite a few emails today. Oh, for the benches. Is that right? Yes. Um, if I remember right, the benches are okay now. After we review them, they're the same. They're going to be the same dimension, even if we moved them to the end of the column area. So, well, you had contact with the, uh, uh, the people who installed it, and they think there's plenty of room, right? Yeah, Susan was at first concerned. Um, but when Matt went through and gave her a new diagram, she sees that there is still movement, so um, she's not as concerned anymore. So if you can see what Matt sent us, if we move the benches to the back, there's three feet as far as movement goes from the columbarium versus if we keep the, keep the benches where we originally want them, there's three feet point three inches as far as the movement goes. Um, Susan was very concerned that the benches where they're located would hinder the movement. Um, so now it's more or less, do we want to keep them as we approved them for site plan or did we want to move four of them so that they had a choice to either look out into the cemetery versus looking at the wall because the movement is there now so we don't really have to do anything. I make a motion to leave them as we originally designed them. No second. We have a motion on the second. Any discussion on that? Not hearing me. Could we have a roll call on that, please? Yes. Jacob Newby. Yes. Ed Rachel. Yes. Lindy Garrett. Yes. Lori Fisher. Yes. Bennett. Yes. Supervisor Pearson. Yes. Now that passes. Okay. Now I can move on to number five, right? Sorry. Just checking. <laughs> okay, uh, the Leonard uh, Summer Festival Committee uh, asked, uh, requested if they, we could uh, participate in what the uh, portable uh, restrooms to the tune of $500. Um, I will say that um, we have been contributing to them all along for many years and we always contribute $500. I would just like to up it a little bit to $600. Um, I do notice I think they came in at $690. So um, our residents all go to the Strawberry Festival and I think with inflation and everything, I think that we should just up it a little bit, I, that's my opinion. But I agree. 
I agree. Let's I'll give agree. them. I like to make a motion to approve Leonard's Summer Festival Committee request for six hundred dollars as partial reimbursement for portable toilets from the Community Projects account. I'll support. Do we have support? Any comments? Roll call on that, please. Ed Brickfield. Yes. Corey Fisher. Yes. Linda Garrett. Yes. Second movie. Yes. Bennett. Yes. Supervisor Pearson. Yes. No, that passes. Uh, now we're on number six. Um, uh, as you know, uh, we're going to recap and uh, grind all of the parking lot, and we're going to recap it, restripe it, and everything. That's going to. They think they can get it all done in one day. <clears throat> I think it's kind of dangerous. To, given how the employees come in here during that day because of all the heavy equipment going back and forth and it's even more dangerous for, I think, the uh, residents to be coming in that day. So what I'd like to do is close the uh, township offices for the employees and of course it's not at their fault, it's because we're doing maintenance so um, I think they should get paid for that. And, um, and I'd like to just ask, uh, it just in, it, it happens to take two days that <clears throat> two days would be uh, the maximum. But uh, I don't think that we should be open. I don't want anybody getting hurt because I know they got, and plus the smell is terrible when they're doing asphalt. So I think we should close it. Um, I've tried to get it to be done on the weekend, but as you know, asphalt plants are done generally during the, uh, during the week. And so they picked uh, Wednesday and um, which is kind of good because then if there is rain or whatever they do it Thursday or whichever and the, and the asphalt plants are still open so that's my suggestion anybody have any comments I, like to, oh, sorry. I was going to ask how the sheriffs are going to get out they be able to park over there yeah they're, they have the grass area farther over we should notify the public somehow other than just being on the website is there any signage that we can put we're in? We're going to have to put cones. We're going to actually have to close the parking lot down. We could put a sign where the fire department is, you know, where it's right now. It could be closed on these two days. On that um, Everybody change drives by. message sign? Yeah. Everybody drives yeah, by. I'll see. I didn't think so. We could probably, probably just work on that. make signs for out there. Yeah. Maybe to be out there with a flag and an orange vest. And yeah. She's already got the vest. That's what that smell comes from. I think we're using our ARPA funds very wisely, and this is part of doing business. I authorize the closure of the township with pay for up to two days, or as determined by the supervisor, for the paving of the parking lot project. A second. Okay, well, motion on a second. Any further discussion? Uh, Karen, can we have a roll call, please? Linker. Yes. Lori Fisher. Yes. Ed Brickfield. Yes. Jacob Newby. Yes. Ben. Yes. Supervisor Pearson. Yes. And that passes. Okay, we'll go on to public forum. Anybody in the public would like to speak? If you do, please come forward and just state your name. Anybody in the public? Okay, not uh, hearing any. Uh, Addison Township Board. Uh, any of you have reports from the board? No. He's doing fine. Yeah, well, no has. We had over 1,400 cars come from the for the Oxford cleanup, and uh, that was a good one. So, yeah. I had a lot of calls on that, so I'm glad that uh, we have we have enough. We have two more this year, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, well, I'll, I'll mention something in the supervisor's report, but uh, I won't do it at this time. I don't know more than I know. But uh, any uh, communications? Yes, we did receive one um, from Robert G. Schramm, and it's concerning the trash removal service. And he has four points um, bulleted throughout his letter. This letter is available at the township for review um, or to look at. Okay, then we'll go to the supervisor's report. Um, the roads are a little bit better. I've been in contact. I go up and meet with the road commission guy all the time with our new foreman, and he's really trying hard. And Jason is his name, and uh, so I am meeting him in all the bad spots and everything, and at least we got the roads a little bit better. I mean, this is one of the worst years. Um, we've had some bad years, but this one, 
seems to be worse and, and I do understand that they're having staffing problems and all kinds of medical problems and but I sure hope it gets better because it's a topic of conversation uh, with all the supervisors right now and, and I do know that there's something afoot that they want to change the uh, <clears throat> turn the road commission over to the county commissioners and um, I don't know if that's the answer or not but um, apparently there's a lot of people that aren't satisfied so hopefully with this new form and that uh, maybe we'll get what we need done we don't ask for a whole lot in this township so um, but we do need a few improvements um, I will say um, just an update, I'm, uh, Ed and I are on the NOTA, which is the North Oakland, Oakland Transportation Authority, and I just want to let everybody know um, how really important this is. Um, last year, um, in 2021, they did 34,617 rides. Uh, that's remarkable. We uh, probably have the best um, transportation system in Oakland County and the west side of Oakland County now has copied our it's called WODA or NODA for north and they're WODA for west and they've copied our whole system and, and uh, because we were so successful and now they are successful I just want to say that our residents in 2021 um, just in Addison Township alone our seniors and disabled people and low income they got uh, 2,600 rides last year. So I just wanted to bring up that our money is well spent. You know that we, uh, we uh, have a quarter mill. That means 25 cents for every $1,000 that your house is taxed. Um, so I, I, I'm just explaining that, that we get our money uh, back tenfold, okay? Because our seniors need to go to their medical um, appointments and their hospital treatments and their dialysis and and the disabled need to get to work um, my son is a prime example he's disabled and he uh, has had a job now for three years and hasn't missed a day of work because of NOTA so anyways um, and already since uh, since January and counting uh, May I think a NOTA has already given 15,306 rides already so that's remarkable. I don't think anybody else can even match the service. This is from your front door to your job or from your front door to your medical appointment or doctor's office or hospital. Um, I don't think anybody can match that service. So anyways, I just want everybody to know that uh, Ed and I have been on that board and, and um, we, if you ever want to take a tour of the new uh, authority we have, you know, we bought a, a, a a building on a Glassby in Oxford and it's completely revamped and our vehicles are inside now um, we, uh, it's, it's a remarkable building and uh, let us know we'll give you a private tour but other than that that's all I had to say I just wanted to update people because sometimes people don't know where their money goes and for 25 cents for every 1,000 um, anybody in Addison Township who is disabled, elderly, or low income can get a ride and uh, we, we make sure that it's available. And I can't think of many communities that can say that. Anyways, other than that, that's all I have to say. Um, uh, I'm looking for a motion for adjournment. I'll make that motion we adjourn. Everybody wants to stay? Is that I'll right? Oh, you. we have support now. <laughs> okay. And, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? We are now adjourned. Thank you.